Shiny Pokemon are some of the hardest things to find in any Pokemon game. In Pokemon Platinum, this remains true as the chances of finding a shiny are about 1 in every 8,192 encounters. Knowing this, I decided to absolutely torture myself and try to beat Pokemon Platinum using only shiny Pokemon. On top of that, as if this challenge wasn't already crazy enough, I'm also going to be adding on the Hardcore Nuzlocke rules to make it way more difficult. With that all being said, I'm ready to get into the game, so I start by naming myself Zango and start my journey looking for my shiny star. Starter. In this run, there's three different choices I can make, and that's Piplup, Turtwig, or Chimchar. Piplup and Turtwig helped me a ton for this first gym, but honestly, I think I'd rather have Chimchar just because of how good it is in the late game. With that being said, I start my shiny hunt looking for a Chimchar. Like I said earlier, the odds really aren't that great. I was encountering a Chimchar about one time every 15 seconds. This means about four Chimchars every minute, 240 Chimchars every hour, and my estimated time to find a shiny Chimchar is about 34 and a half hours. Thankfully, though, I ended up being a little bit under odds, and in about 28 hours, I found myself a shiny Chimchar. Oh, there it is! Let's go! Shiny Chimchar! Oh my gosh, dude! Wow, what a good shiny! Shiny Chimchar! Let's go, man! Oh my gosh, that's insane! Looking at my Chimchar, I find out that he has a naive nature and the ability Blaze. Naive really isn't that great, I mean the speed up is nice I guess, but that special defense down means that if I get blown on the wrong way, I'm gone. Either way, now I can continue on into the game where I get to nickname my Chimchar Apollo. With that, I can now start my journey towards Jubilife where I first let my mom know I'm never coming back, then I learn how to catch a Pokemon for about the millionth time in my life, and finally, I'm in Jubilife. Once I get here, it becomes really apparent to me that I definitely need to catch another Pokemon before for my next rival battle. Now obviously I would rather have this not be the case, but because my rival has a Piplup who definitely has Bubble at this point, my Chimchar stands no chance. So what I decide to do is hop onto the grass on Route 202 and start my next shiny hunt. For this shiny hunt, I'm not really too picky on what I want because every single one of these Pokemon will definitely help me out with my rival. That being said, after only about 9-ish hours, I ended up landing myself a Shinx. Shinx is huge, especially since it has Intimidate, that means I'll be able to use it throughout pretty much this entire run. I look at its nature find out it's brave, and give it the nickname Zeus because that just feels right. Now I can talk to a few of these clowns to get myself the Poke Watch and get into my first rival battle where I realize I was wrong and Piplup doesn't have bubble. So yeah, after wasting 9 hours of my life, I go into Orberg City. This city contains the rock type gym leader Rourke, which is a really good name for his profession. Rourke? That's like basically rock, I guess. Regardless, like I said earlier, his team is pretty powerful and I don't have a single reliable way to deal with any of his Pokemon. So what I decided to do is go on to Route 203 where there's a chance I find a shiny Badoo. Badoo is one of the most common encounters on this route, so it's not necessarily unlikely and pretty much anything will help, so I just decide to shiny on here. Thankfully, I end up getting decently lucky, and I land myself a shiny Badoo in only about 6 hours. I give Badoo the nickname Dionysus, then check out the nature, which is docile, and the ability, which is natural cure, which are both pretty okay, I guess. I then evolve my Chimchar to Monferno, and I also could have evolved my Badoo into Rose Zelia, but I really didn't need to, especially since this gym looks really, really easy now. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is while I was evolving Monferno, it wanted to learn the move Mach Punch, which is a really good move. And if you guys want to make a good move yourself, you should be checking out the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and it helps you to save money, eat better, and stress less about the meals you're going to make. HelloFresh delivers to you high quality, fresh, and delicious ingredients right to your doorstep. These ingredients help you to create a chef craft crafted recipe at affordable prices, and they are really, really good. Before starting HelloFresh, my diet was horrible, and I was feeling bad because of it. But now, thanks to HelloFresh and their 45 different dinner options, I'm able to live a healthier lifestyle. That helps to keep my energy up, and that's something I really need when I do these shiny hunts. A lot of the time to get these videos out, I've got to work really quickly. Thankfully, HelloFresh is able to help me out with that, as they have quick and easy meals to prepare in only about 15 minutes. HelloFresh is a great way for you to start your new year right, as it allows you to minimize stress and save time and money. All those things sound pretty good to me, and if you start HelloFresh now, you'll be able to start your day off right with one free breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. Click the link in my description or use my code and get free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription's active. Huge thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. If you want to support the channel, this is definitely the best way how. You should really go check them out. Thanks again to HelloFresh, and let's get back to the video. With that, Rourke brings out his Geodude, and I start with Diane. 
Dionysus. With Dionysus, I outspeed and start out by going for a Mega Drain, which is four times super effective, so it easily drops Geodude. With that, the next Pokemon to come in is Onix, who's also four times weak to Mega Drain, so it's an easy one shot as it brings out the last Pokemon, Craniados. Or Cranidos, I guess. I think I said that really wrong. Either way, all it takes is two Mega Drains from Badoo to finish him off, and that wins me my first gym badge relatively easily. After leaving Orberg City, I run into my rival, who I just realized is nicknamed Barf. I totally forgot I did that. Either way, this leads me onto my first real fight with Team Galactic, which I absolutely stomp them in. After this battle, I evolve my Shinx into Luxio, then head into Floroma Town. In Floroma, I've got to deal with even more Team Galactic, and once I make it into Valley Windworks, I've got one of the hardest early game battles in any Nuzlocke ever. This is the dreaded Commander Mars and her Perugly. She leads this fight with Zubat, as I lead with Zeus, and normally I would easily have one shot at Zubat with a single spark, but I went into this battle way too quickly and I accidentally fat fingered tackle. This means it takes an extra turn to take out Zubat, and on that extra turn, I end up getting hit with a toxic. Once Zubat goes down, Perugly gets sent in, and I've got to switch out immediately into Apollo. This is one of the main reasons why I chose Chimchar, and that's because now I can go for some super effective rock smashes. On the first turn, I get hit by a fake out, and on the next, I get hit by a scratch, taking it down to 28 remaining. But it's all good though, as I'm able to get off a rock smash that does a ton of damage to Perugly, doing almost exactly half and lowering her defense. With Perugly's defense at minus one, I'm able to go for a single mock punch to take her down, and that wins me my battle against Commander Mars. That fight right there is one of the main reasons why I chose Chimchar, because if I didn't have him, this could have been a run ender. Either way, my next step on this journey leads me on to Eterna Forest. In this forest, there's a lot of good Pokemon I can get, but since I have Cheryl with me, I really don't want her to kill any shinies I might get, so I just wait till she's gone. At this point, I go into Eterna City, where I just, you know, peep around a little bit, do some story, get everything done before going back into Eterna Forest and starting another shiny hunt. At this point in the game, I don't particularly need another shiny, but I kind of want to fill out my team a little bit, so I just look for one here. This one took me way too long to find. In about two weeks, I ended up landing myself a shiny Baneri. I give Baneri the nickname Aphrodite, check out the ability, which is Runaway, and look at the nature too, which is Relaxed. With this Baneri, it means I get a low punny later, and I better not get a single comment about that. Not one. No low punny comments. That's the rule. Either way, I go back into Eterna City, where I'm actually ready to challenge the second gym. Gardenia leads the fight with Turtwig, as I lead with Apollo and start out by going for a taunt. The reason I did this was because there's no way I one-shot Turtwig, and because Turtwig can set up Reflect, I really don't want that. So with that taunt, Turtwig couldn't set up Reflect, and on the next turn, I go for a Flame Wheel that does big damage, taking Turtwig all the way down into the red. Unfortunately for me though, I did get crit by a Razor Leaf that took me down to 32 remaining. At this point, Turtwig gets healed, but it doesn't really matter as two more Flame Wheels finish him off. Now the next Pokemon to come in is Cherum, who also gets two shot by a Flame Wheel, and this brings in the last Pokemon, Roserade. Roserade starts off by going for a Stun Spore, paralyzing me, as I then go for a Flame Wheel that does big damage and causes her to use her Berry. On the next turn, I get hit by a Magical Leaf that takes me down to 17 remaining, but it's far too late for this Roserade, as now I'm able to land my final Flame Wheel, finishing off Roserade and winning me my second gym battle. With that gym finished up, I walk inside the Team Galactic headquarters and fight myself a Skuntang. I noticed just now that this is Commander Mars, and the last one was Commander Jupiter, but I'm not re-recording that, so yeah. Are you sure about that? Either way, Skuntank easily goes down, I get myself a bike, so I can start heading towards the next city. On my way there, I evolve Badoo into Roselia, and I also evolve Baneri into a Lopani. Both of these Pokemon should be relatively useful in my next gym battle in Hearthholm City. Even still, this one might be a little bit difficult just because ghost types are really hard for my team to deal with right now. Either way, I think up a solid plan and decide to go right into it against Gym Leader Fantina with Dionysus. She leads with Duskull, so the first thing I do is go for a Giga Drain that does about two-thirds as Duskull then goes for a future site. In the following turn, one more Giga Drain finishes off Duskull and leads into the next Pokemon Haunter. For Haunter, I decide to make a switch into Apollo, who gets hit by a Confuse Ray on the switch in and also gets hit by that future site for basically no damage though. Even while I'm confused, I still decide to go for a Flame Wheel just to see what I can do, and it does about two-thirds to Haunter as I break through the confusion. On that same turn though, I get hit by a Shadow Claw, which takes me down to 49 remaining, which kind of leaves me in a pretty scary territory. The smart move here is probably to switch out and use another Pokemon, but I'm not smart. I'm a risk taker. So I decide to go for another Flame Wheel. It lands, thankfully, finishing off Haunter and bringing out Miss Magius. Miss Magius is pretty hard to deal with. I start out by bringing in Roselia, who gets nailed by a Psybeam, doing over half. Now I actually did the damage calcs for this fight, and there's no way I die unless Miss Magius hits two perfect high rolls. She's already hit one, and on the next turn, she decides to go for a Shadow Ball, but thankfully, I live it, and I'm able to go for a Giga Drain, doing about a third. Now, the next thing I decide to do is switch into Aphrodite. 
With Aphrodite, I can hardly do any damage at all as the only moves I have right now are normal and fighting type moves. The only way I can actually damage Miss Maggie is just with Grass Nod and it's only doing like one damage a piece, but damage is damage I guess. Once Aphrodite gets really low at about 8 HP, I decide to switch out into Zeus. Zeus gets hit by a side beam on the first turn doing pretty reasonable damage and on the next turn I get nailed by a shadow ball taking me all the way down into the red. Thankfully this is the last turn I had to worry about as with Zeus I nailed Miss Maggie with a bite and that takes her down winning me my third gym badge. Next up, before the next city, I've got another rival battle, and this one goes really easily. My team is pretty well built for this, so I just kind of stomp him. I then walk around everywhere, figuring out where I need to go, because I haven't played Pokemon Platinum that much, and as I'm doing that, my Luxio evolves into a Luxray. Eventually, I find out where I'm supposed to be, and get inside of Veilstone City. In this city, I meet Crasher Wake, who's singing his amazing tune, and I then walk into Veilstone City Gym, where I'm ready to go challenge the fourth gym leader. Aileen leads his fight with Metatite, as I lead with Dionysus, and start up by going for a growth. On that same turn, I get hit by a rock tomb that lowers my speed by one stage, so on the next turn, Metatite outspeeds and hits me with a confusion. This confusion takes me down to 28 remaining, but after a Giga Drain, I do enough damage to one-shot Metatite and regain 30 HP back. This leads into the next Pokemon, Machoke, who goes down to just two Giga Drains and brings in the final Pokemon, Lucario. Lucario starts out by going for a Metal Claw, doing some huge damage, taking me down into the red immediately. With 14 HP left, I decide to go for another Giga Drain, and it does about a fourth, but at this point, I definitely need to switch out. So what I decide to do is bring in Zeus and get off that Intimidate so Lucario is at minus one when I get hit by a Force Palm. Now that I've got that Intimidate off, this Lucario is not doing enough damage to kill me, so I just have to go for two more Sparks, finish off Lucario, and that wins me my fourth badge. On my journey towards the next gym, I've got to fight more of Team Galactic, and this time I fight them right in Veilstone City. This is a double battle and their team's pretty easy to deal with, so I make quick work of them as I head on to the next area. This takes me all the way to Pistoria City, where I've got another rival battle right before I fight the next gym. Thankfully, Zeus is really good for this rival battle, so I'm pretty easily able to beat it with him, and once I get inside the gym, I get myself an Infernape, then I challenge Crasher Wake for my fifth badge. Wake leads a battle with his Gyarados as I lead with Zeus. As we get sent out, we both hit each other with Intimidate, as then Gyarados hits me with a waterfall that actually flinches me. This is kind of annoying because I have to take some more unnecessary damage to another waterfall, but after I do, I go for a Thunderfang that does enough to Oko the Gyarados. At this point, I've got 52 HP left, going into the next Pokemon Quagsire, so I decide to switch out into Dionysus, who gets hit by a mud shot on the switch in. On the next turn, I go for a Giga Drain against Quagsire, and because it's four times super effective, I absolutely obliterate him, going into the final Pokemon Floatzel. Floatzel's faster than Roselia, and starts out by going for an Ice Fang that does some major damage, nearly taking out Roselia with a one-shot. That Ice Fang did way more damage than I was expecting, but it doesn't really matter that much, as I get off a Giga Drain, finishing off Floatzel with another one-shot, and winning myself my fifth bat. With that being said, right when I walk out of the gym, I walk into the Safari Zone, or right next to it, as I hear this massive bomb go off. For some reason, Team Galactic decided to nuke the Safari Zone, for whatever reason. I mean, the Pokemon there have got to be absolutely devastated. Either way, I chase this guy up really far, all the way up to Lake Valor, where I meet up with Cynthia, who gives me this secret potion or whatever. I'm 100% positive there's something illegal in that secret potion, because it gets these Psyducks to move out of my way, and gets me onto Route 207. This is probably one of the worst routes in all of Pokemon just because of how hard it is to get through this place without defog. Once I get through there though, I've got to fight Team Galactic's leader, Cyrus. This first fight against him is actually really easy, he doesn't have any good Pokemon yet, so I kind of just sweep right through him. That being said, it's after this that I get the HM for Surf, and I don't actually have a Pokemon that can use Surf, so I decide to go get myself one. I've got to go all the way back to Jubilife City where I can get myself an Old Rod. This Old Rod allows me to fish in the water in Route 218 where I can find myself a Magikarp. Now Magikarp could be an insane insanely useful Pokemon in this run. It evolves into Gyarados, which is a really good Pokemon overall, and has the ability Intimidate. That being said though, fishing for a shiny is really hard, especially since sometimes you don't even get a nibble. That being said, this was probably one of the hardest shinies I've ever gotten. It took me nearly two and a half weeks of shiny hunting to eventually land myself a shiny Magikarp. Oh my god! Yes, dude, finally! Oh! My gosh, there it is, the shiny Gyarados. Holy crap, that took forever. Finally, we got it. That's so good. We can finally keep the run going. That's insane. I'm so happy.
With that Magikarp finally on the team, I evolve it immediately into Gyarados and give it the HM Surf. This allows me to cross route 218 and make it onto the next city where I meet up with the move deleter and get rid of a lot of these HMs that I don't need anymore. It's at this point where I find myself in yet another rival battle against Barf, and this is another pretty easy one. My team is really good at dealing with his. With that, I can now take this boat to head on to Iron Island, and once I get here, I find myself in another Team Galactic mess. Thankfully, they're dealt with pretty quickly, and after walking around Iron Island for a little bit, I eventually find myself a Shiny Stone, which allows me to evolve my Roselia into Roserade. On this island, I also get myself a Riolu Egg, which I decide to hatch just because, you know, maybe it's a Shiny, and obviously I didn't get that lucky, but it does lead me on into the next jam. This fight is up against Byron and his Steel types, and he leads the fight with Magneton, as I lead with Zeus. With Zeus, I start off by going for a Swagger, which confuses Magneton and causes him to hit himself with confusion. On the next turn, I go for a Charge to power up my Electric type moves and raise my special defense so that on the next turn I can hit a really powerful Thunder Fang. This Thunder Fang does a little over a third and paralyzes Magneton as he's still confused at this point. Eventually, Magneton breaks through confusion and hits me with a try attack that brings me down to 58 remaining, and at this point, I just go for another Thunder Fang to take out Magneton and bring out the next Pokemon Steelix. I know Steelix's moveset and I know he's gonna go for an Earthquake, so what I decide to do is switch into Neptune. This switch means I don't take any damage on the switch in, and I'm also able to get off an Intimidate. From here, all it takes is a couple of surfs to take down Steelix and bring out the ace Pokemon Bastiodon. This Pokemon's got a really high defense stat, but it is four times weak to fighting moves, so I send in Aphrodite. Aphrodite doesn't get a hit for any damage on the switch in, so on the next turn, I end up going for a jump kick that does about half as he heals up with a Citrus Berry. On that same turn, he sets up an iron defense, which just makes my job just that much harder. Either way, Bastiodon's not really doing too much damage to me, so I just continue to spam jump kick until eventually I do enough damage to take out Bastiodon and win myself my sixth badge. Now that I've got that badge, I've got to do some more Team Galactic shenanigans where I go around to all the Great Lakes. I don't know if they're actually called that, but you know, I'd like to think so. As I'm going through there, I get into a fight with this guy who has quite possibly the worst haircut I've ever seen. <laughs> top of his head. I've then got to fight even more Team Galactic. This is honestly a drab. Before I continue on into any more of this storyline, I decided to take a pit stop and stop at this grass right outside of Hearthome City. At this point, I was kind of just looking to fill out my team since I only have one slot remaining for a Pokemon and I decided to start another shiny hunt right here. There's a few good Pokemon I can catch here, but in the end, I end up with a Routes that I catch and nickname Artemis. This ended up being another one of those quick shiny hunts as it only took me about nine hours. Now, the next thing I do is fully evolve routes into Gardevoir, and then I've got some more Team Galactic. I don't know why, but I was so lost, it wasn't even funny. I kept looking around in different cities to figure out where I needed to go next, and it was not happening. Eventually, though, I ended up in the lake where I first started the game. Here is where I finish Commander Mars and go all the way back towards Mount Coronet so I can start my journey towards the 7th gym. It's a pretty quick, but honestly very rough journey as I'm battered by snow the entire way there, but eventually I find myself rock climb and I make it into the city. In the city, I find an Ultra Ball, which was nice and then it takes me absolutely way too long to figure out this gym puzzle before I get into my fight with Candace. Candace leads the battle with Sneasel as I lead with Apollo. Right away with Apollo, I start off by going for a Flame Wheel as I outspeed and one-shot Sneasel in the process as the next Pokemon Palace One comes in and also gets one-shotted, this time by a close combat. This then brings in the third Pokemon Frostless, who actually miraculously survives a Flame Wheel and is able to nail me with a Psychic, taking me all the way down to 22 remaining. That was really scary, especially since since I was almost positive I was gonna kill. Either way, Apollo survived and another Flame Wheel is able to take out Frostless and bring out the final Pokemon, Obama Snow. Now, Obama Snow is a bit tricky. Nah, I'm just playing. It's not tricky at all. It's four times super effective Flame Wheel. You know how it goes. That right there is my seventh badge down and with it, I'm getting really close to finishing this game. I've got some really difficult battles coming up and I honestly don't know how I'm gonna deal with them. Either way, I guess we'll get there when we get there and now I move on to the final lake of the game. Once I get there, I witness Barf getting absolutely a assassinated in a Pokemon battle, which is honestly fair because this team sucks. Once I watch that happen, I go all the way back to Veilstone where I meet up with Team Galactic yet again, this time to beat them in their own warehouse. In this warehouse, I witness Cyrus spewing some amazing propaganda, honestly. I mean, the fact that he has this many people just listening to him is kind of crazy. I wish I had that because then maybe more than 3.8% of my viewers would actually be subscribed. No, but seriously guys, if you are enjoying the content and you've made it this far in the video, please consider hitting that red button because it really 
really does help out the channel. While you're down there, if you could also leave a comment and a like, that would also really help out. Either way, going back to the video now, I've got a fight with Cyrus, and this is another one of those fights where his team's really not that good yet. To be honest with you, all this fight really does is lead me onto Mount Coronet, where the real fights actually begin. This first one is a double battle against Commander Mars and Jupiter. Thankfully though, I don't have to face it on my own, as Barf is here to help me out, and his team gets absolutely demolished, but it does allow me to pretty much KO all of their Pokemon. Continuing on a little bit into the game, Cyrus decides to use his magic and open up the Distortion World, which is honestly just a really crazy place. Going through there is a bit rough, I'm not gonna lie to you, but eventually I make it all the way through and onto my final fight against Cyrus. Cyrus leads this fight with his Houndoom as I lead with Apollo and start out by going for a close combat, and since Houndoom is a dark type, this thing gets annihilated. Next up is Gyarados, and for this, I decide to switch into my Gyarados so I don't take any damage from an Earthquake. Unfortunately, rather than Gyarados going for an Earthquake, it goes for a Waterfall, so I still take a little bit of damage, but I do get off an Intimidate, so it's gonna be less. Because Gyarados is at minus one, I feel pretty safe right here to set up two consecutive Dragon Dances. This should give me the firepower I need to take Gyarados out in a couple more turns, and thankfully, it does. Unfortunately, though, while I was doing that, I took a lot of damage and got brought down to 21 HP remaining when Honchkrow came out. Thankfully, against Honchkrow, it's an easy one-shot with Ice Fang, but once Weavile comes in, I've definitely gotta switch out to Apollo. Weavile doesn't really have anything to deal with Apollo, so all it takes is a simple close combat to bring out the final Pokemon, Crobat. Unfortunately for me, Crobat was kind of annoying to take out because this thing has Confuse Ray and Toxic, but eventually he goes down and I win my final battle against Team Galactic. Now, before getting out of the Distortion World, I've gotta do one more thing, and that's battle Garatina. Now, just before going into this fight, I realized that you can actually shiny hunt this thing, so that's exactly what I decided to do. Thankfully, this thing isn't shiny locked because after about 74 hours, I ended up landing myself a shiny Garatina. This was one of the most rewarding shinies I got throughout the entire run, so I give him the nickname Hades and continue my journey towards the final gym. To fight this final gym, I've gotta go to Sunny Shore City. Oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister. Wow. Once I get there, I head into the gym and fight Volkner for my final badge. He leads this fight with Jolteon as I lead with Aphrodite. Jolteon starts out by hitting me with the charge beam as I go for a dizzy punch that does about a third. The same thing happens in the next two turns until eventually Jolteon goes down, leading into the next Pokemon, Raichu. For Raichu, the first thing I like to do is switch into Roserade, who tanks a Focus Blast, and on the next turn, also gets hit by a Signal Beam. It's at this point where we start trading attacks until eventually I get an unlucky miss with Toxic, which puts me in a pretty bad position. Thankfully though, in the next turn, I'm able to land it, and with that Toxic and Giga Drink combo, I'm also able to regain a lot of HP going into the third Pokemon, Luxray. With Luxray, I decide to make the decision to switch into Gyarados so I can get off an Intimidate. I then decide to swap through Zeus and Neptune over and over again to get off a bunch of Intimidates to lower Luxray's attack stat. This allows me to stay in with Gyarados for an extra turn and get off an Aqua Tail that does about half to Luxray. Even with all those Intimidates I set up earlier though, I still get nailed by a Thunder Fang, and I've gotta switch back out into Zeus one final time. With Zeus, I now start to spam crunches until eventually I take out Luxray, but I'm left with 64 HP going into the final Pokemon, Electivire. Now this is probably one of the hardest Pokemon in the game to take out. The only way I think I can do it is with my Infernape, but if I switch in, I'm gonna be taking damage. So what I decide to do is switch into Dionysus. Even though I know Dionysus is gonna go down to a Fire Punch, it gives me the opportunity to get a free switch into my Infernape, which helps me out a ton in this battle. Unfortunately for Dionysus though, that means he's gonna go down to a Fire Punch and he will definitely be missed. Like I said earlier though, the reason I did this was so I can get a free switch into that Infernape, which really helps me out as with two close combats, I'm able to take out Electivire and win my final badge. Now that all that's out of the way, I can go on to Victory Road and all the way up to the Pokemon League. Before I do anything in this Pokemon League though, I decide to go to the Move Deleter and the Move Tutor to get my team right before heading into the Elite Four. Once all my move sets and level cap are all situated, I decide to get into my final rival battle. Now at this point, because the level cap is so high, my team is way higher level than my rival, so I kind of just stomp him super easily. After pushing Barf aside, I... Mm, that kind of sounds gross. <laughs> After pushing my rival aside, I get into the Elite Four and start my first Elite Four battle against Eren. Eren starts this battle off by bringing out Yanmega as I bring out Neptune. Yanmega starts out by going for a double team as I then go for a Dragon Dance and Yanmega gets a speed boost. On the next turn, the exact same thing happens, leaving us both at plus two speed and Yanmega has plus two evasion as well. Yanmega was always gonna outspeed me though, so on the next turn, I get nailed by an Air Slash, not doing too much damage though as I'm able to go for an Ice Fang, actually landing it and finishing off Yanmega with a one shot. This leads into the next Pokemon, Vespaquin, who also gets one shotted by an Ice Fang, bringing out the third Pokemon, Hera. 
Heracross. With Heracross, I don't have to have any risk of missing as I'm able to just go for a 100% accuracy waterfall that does one shot and leads into Scizor. With Scizor, I'm also able to go for another 100% accuracy move, this time Earthquake. With that plus two attack, it does one shot and lead into the final Pokemon Drapion. Drapion's a simple Oko with a two times super effective Earthquake and that ends up winning me my first Elite Four battle. For my next Elite Four battle, I've got to go up against Bertha and this fight should be just as easy as the last. Bertha leads this fight with Wish Cash as I lead with Gyarados and start up by setting up a Dragon Dance. Bertha then absolutely whiffs his end headbutt, allowing me to set up a second Dragon Dance in the next turn. Now rather than going for an actual attacking move here, Bertha decides to go for Sandstorm, which is honestly kind of useless. With that Sandstorm, I could have gone for a third Dragon Dance, but because I don't want to be as useless as Bertha, I decide to just go for a Waterfall, finishing off Wish Cash. Now I'm at plus 2 attack and plus 2 speed going into Golem, and since Waterfall is 4 times super effective, it's an easy Oko, leading into Rhyperior. Rhyperior and the following Pokemon Gliscor both go down to an easy one shot from Waterfall, leading into the final Pokemon Hippowdon. Hippowdon's a pretty bulky Pokemon, but even it stands no chance to my Gyarados and that plus two attack Waterfall. With that, I'm finished up with my second battle and I'm off towards my third against Flint. Flint leads the fight with Houndoom as I again lead with Neptune. With Neptune, I start off the same way I've started out every other time and that's starting with Dragon Dance. After Dragon Dance, Houndoom sets up a sunny day, which means my Waterfalls are gonna do a little bit less damage than before. Thankfully, I don't actually need to use Waterfall to take out Houndoom, and I just elect to go for an Earthquake instead, and it's still two times super effective finishing off Houndoom. The next Pokemon to get sent in is Infernape, and for this, I go for the same thing I did against Houndoom, this time getting a critical hit Earthquake, easily one-shotting. Now the next two Pokemon also catch the work, as Magmortar and Flareon both get sauced up by a pair of Earthquakes, leading into the final Pokemon Rapidash. Rapidash is the only Pokemon I change up the formula on, as I decide to go for a Waterfall as the sun just went away, and I'm not trying to use any more Earthquake PP. Regardless, it obviously does work out fine and leads me onto the fourth Elite Four member, Lucien. Against Lucien, I start out with Hades as he leads with Mr. Mime. Against Mr. Mime, I start out by going for a Shadow Force as he ends up setting up both a Light Screen and Reflect while I was gone. This sucks, but I was still able to one-shot as this brings out the next Pokemon, Espeon. Espeon is a lot more difficult to take out, so I decide to start out by switching into Aphrodite who ends up avoiding a Shadow Ball by being a normal type. On the next turn, Espeon hits me with a Psychic doing a really good chunk of damage as I try to go for a Dizzy Punch, but I don't get the confusion. Because I'm below half with Aphrodite, I decided to just switch out into Neptune, who tanks a Signal Beam on the switch in. On the next turn, Espeon nails me with a Psychic, taking me down to 115 remaining, but this is where I start to go for my signature Dragon Dance. This Dragon Dance gives me just enough attack and speed to finish off Espeon with a one-shot from Waterfall, leading into the next Pokemon, Gallade. Gallade is another one of those Pokemons where I can get an easy kill with a Waterfall, as it brings out Bronzong, and this is going to be a little bit harder. Against Bronzong, I start up by going for a Waterfall, doing about two-thirds, as then Bronzong hits me with a Psychic, taking me down to 75 remaining. On the next turn, Bronzong gets healed with a Full Restore, and thankfully on the next turn, all it takes is two more Waterfalls to finish off Bronzong and bring out the final Pokemon, Alakazam. Alakazam's defense stat is abysmal, so it really only takes one Waterfall to finish him off, and that ends up winning me my final Elite Four battle. Now, with all of that and the rest of the run behind us, I go and take on Champion Cynthia in my final battle, of this run. Cynthia leads this battle with Spiritomb as I lead with Apollo. With Apollo, I start out by going for a Swords Dance as Spiritomb lands a Psychic, taking me down to 63 remaining. At this point, at plus two attack, I elect to go for a Flare Blitz, which easily finishes off Spiritomb and brings out the next Pokemon in my Lodic. Now, because of that Flare Blitz, I'm left with 16 HP remaining. So, on this next turn against my Lodic, I kind of have to decide what to do. I could have decided to switch out, but with that plus two attack on close combat, it was way too tempting. So, I decided to go for it, and thankfully, I do end up one-shotting. The next Pokemon to come in is Flare Blitz, and there's absolutely no way I'm surviving past this point. I decide to just go for a Flare Blitz, go out in a blaze of glory, which does take down Togekiss in the process. Now, Cynthia's got three Pokemon remaining, and I just lost my first Pokemon in this fight, so I'm looking really good to win this. For my next Pokemon, I decide to bring out Neptune, as Cynthia brings out her Ace Garchomp. This was the absolute perfect outcome for me, as Neptune has Ice Fang, which is four times super effective against Garchomp. On the first turn, Garchomp outspeeds me and does exactly 90 damage with a Dragon Rush as I then get off an Ice Fang. Even though it's four times super effective, it doesn't kill and it takes Garchomp down to about a third remaining and she heals up a little bit with a Citrus Berry. Honestly though, this is probably one of the best outcomes I could have had. Even though I get hit by another Dragon Rush, which takes me all the way down to 14 remaining, because of that Citrus Berry, Cynthia didn't actually get to heal with a full restore, so all it takes is one more Ice Fang to take out Garchomp. With that, Cynthia's hardest Pokemon is taken care of and that brings out Lucario. 
Lucario. Against Lucario, the first thing I do is switch into Hades so I don't get killed by an extreme speed. Because it's a normal type move, I actually don't take any damage, and on the next turn, I end up going for a Will-O-Wisp as Lucario hits me with a Shadow Ball, doing a pretty good chunk of my health. On the next turn, Lucario hits me with yet another Shadow Ball, doing about another third to me as I then go for an Ancient Power, hoping for an Omni Boost that I end up not getting. With that, I had hoped I could survive another Shadow Ball, but Lucario gets a pretty high damage roll, and it does take out Hades. This kind of sucks, as I did just lose my best shiny in the run, but it does give me a free switch into Aphrodite. With this switch, I outspeed Lucario and go for a Dizzy Punch, but it doesn't get the confusion, and I get nailed by an Aura Sphere that takes me all the way down to 20 HP left. On the next turn, Aphrodite goes down to an extreme speed, but this is okay, as Lucario's been taking burn damage ever since I hit him with that Will-O-Wisp. This means at this point, he's really low, so Cynthia's likely gonna heal for a full restore, so I just decide to bring in Neptune again. Knowing that Cynthia's likely gonna heal here, I decide to go for an Earthquake with Gyarados because I'm not gonna get hit by an extreme speed. This Earthquake is two times super effective, and even though Lucario is at full HP when he gets hit, it still does just enough damage to KO and bring out the final Pokemon Roserade. Against Roserade, raid, I let her take out Neptune so I can get a free switch into Artemis, and with Artemis, I just go for a couple of Psychics, Roserade goes down, and I win my final battle of this run. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it, please consider subscribing as it really does help out the channel. This particular video took me over a hundred hours to make, so I really hope you enjoyed, and with that being said, see ya.